Step 1. Arthroscopic Assessment – Determining Defect Size and Macy Candidacy During an arthroscopic assessment and prior to biopsy harvest, confirm patient candidacy for Macy treatment by evaluating size, location, bone involvement, and degree of containment. When assessing defect size, be sure to consider the debridement of all diseased and damaged cartilage tissue. To create a favorable environment for healing, concomitant pathologies such as meniscal pathology, cruciate ligament instability, and malalignment should be addressed prior to or concurrent with treatment with the Macy implant. Step 2. Collection of the patient's own cartilage. When harvesting a biopsy, there are three non-load-bearing locations recommended. The lateral intercondylar notch, the superior lateral trochlear ridge, and the superior medial trochlear ridge. In all cases, two full-thickness specimens measuring approximately 5 by 8 millimeters are needed. Obtaining some bone with a biopsy is also recommended. Step 2. Collection of the patient's own cartilage with an open ring curette. When harvesting at the superior lateral or medial trochlear ridge with a ring curette, create a crescent-shaped specimen by engaging the back of the curette. Loosen the specimen by moving the curette in a side-to-side -side motion. Leave the distal end attached and remove the tissue with an arthroscopic grasper. When harvesting from the lateral intercondylar notch, use the back edge of the open curette to penetrate the cartilage down to the subchondral bone. Advance up the side of the notch by slightly pronating and supinating the hand while keeping constant pressure. Leave the distal end attached and remove the tissue with an arthroscopic grasper. Step 2. Collection of the patient's cartilage with a notch plasty gouge. For harvesting at the intercondylar notch, flex the knee approximately 90 degrees. Starting at the anterior aspect of the notch and working laterally, use the gouge or ring curette to elevate tissue from the lateral condyle. Leave the distal end attached and remove the tissue with an arthroscopic grasper. When harvesting from the proximal trochlear ridge, Fully extend the knee, and using similar technique, work the gouge proximally to elevate tissue. Step 3. Exposing the defect for mini open delivery of the Macy implant. After the biopsy has been processed and the Macy implant is delivered, it's time to begin the implantation procedure. Prepare the patient with standard draping and skin preparation. A tourniquet may be used to control bleeding and ensure a bloodless field. Perform a mini arthrotomy based on a location to fully expose the defect. Keep the skin retracted in order to gain access to the defect area. Step 4. Defect Preparation – Assessing and Removing Damaged Cartilage First, assess the cartilage defect for all diseased, damaged, delaminated, or thinning cartilage. Then, determine the appropriate size cutting template to be used from the provided Macy Surgical Implantation Kit. Align the selected instrument to the cartilage defect, outlining the area of the defect. Then, using the mallet, gently tap the instrument down through the cartilage, down to the subchondral bone. Take care not to penetrate the subchondral plate. Gently lift the instrument from the defect. Then, using a ring curette, remove all damaged and fibrous tissues, including the calcified layer from within the margins created by the instrument. Remove as little healthy cartilage as possible. If ebernated bone or osteophytes are present, they must be removed down to the level of the subchondral bone. For osteochondral defects, debreed to healthy, stable bone. Bleeding at the bone surface must be controlled using a hemostatic agent. 
Step 5. Shaping the Macy implant to match the defect size. On a sterile field, place a sterile dish or container of sufficient size to hold the contents of the Macy implant bottle, approximately 120 milliliters of media. Ensure the Macy implant is free-floating and not adhered to the inner surface of the bottle. Aseptically and rapidly decant the bottle contents into the sterile dish including all transport media and the Macy implant. Note, if the Macy implant remains in the bottle, media from the sterile dish can be returned to the bottle via sterile syringe and decanted again. Alternatively, if the Macy implant has remained in the neck of the bottle, it can be extracted using sterile, non-toothed forceps to grasp an edge or corner. Once decanted, place it cell side up on the sterile cutting block provided from the Macy Surgical Implantation Kit. As close to the edges of membrane as possible, using the same cutting template selected for debridement and the mallet, gently tap the instrument through until the implant has been cut through to size. Remove the instrument and use non-toothed forceps to lift the Macy implant, which is now ready for fixation into the cartilage defect. Step 6. Sutureless Fixation Implanting and Affixing the Macy Implant Solely with Fibrin Glue Before applying fibrin glue, check the size and shape of the prepared Macy Implant to ensure proper fit. Ensure the defect base is free of tissue and bleeding. Then apply a thin layer of fibrin sealant to the entire base of the defect. Maintaining Appropriate Rotational Orientation Apply the implant to the defect bone bed with the cell side down adjacent to the bone. Apply light digital pressure to the implant for approximately 3 minutes. Further fibrin sealant may also be applied to the rim of the implant. Finally, fully flex and extend the knee several times and then inspect the implant to ensure it has remained in place. The implantation should be followed by an appropriate physician-prescribed rehabilitation program. Step 7. Restore with your patient's own cells. Cellular restoration occurs in several stages. A few days after treatment, the chondrocytes migrate from the cell-seeded surface of the implant into the fibrin. Over the next several months, these cells begin to synthesize matrix proteins consistent with the native cartilage, including type 2 collagen, agrican, and other matrix proteins. Over the course of a year, the matrix continues to expand to fill the defect and reaches full maturity over the next 12 to 24 months. Quality Ensured by Design Technology, QED Proprietary lab processes and expertise ensure highest quality cells. Throughout the cell culture stage, chondrocytes are regularly examined for growth, morphology, and sterility. Lot segregation and closed culture conditions are in place to prevent cross-contamination. Once cells are expanded, they are uniformly loaded onto the membrane, ensuring that a controlled dose of cells are applied to each defect. Finally, VIP assays are utilized to confirm the viability, identity, and potency prior to final release. A novel gene expression assay to characterize the cells and verify chondrogenetic synthesis. Our quality ensured by design technology makes certain the highest quality standards are achieved. Indication Macy, autologous cultured chondrocytes on porcine collagen membrane is an autologous cellularized scaffold product that is indicated for the repair of single or multiple symptomatic full thickness cartilage defects of the adult knee with or without bone involvement. Macy is intended for autologous use and must only be administered to the patient for whom it was manufactured. The implantation of Macy is to be performed via an arthrotomy to the knee joint under sterile conditions. The amount of Macy administered is dependent upon the size, surface, and centimeters squared of the cartilage defect. The implantation membrane is trimmed by the treating surgeon to the size and shape of the defect 
to ensure the damaged area is completely covered and implanted cell side down. Limitations of use. Effectiveness of Macy in joints other than the knee has not been established. Safety and effectiveness of Macy in patients over the age of 55 years have not been established. Important safety information. Macy is contraindicated in patients with a known history of hypersensitivity to gentamicin, other aminoglycosides, or products of porcine or bovine origin. Macy is also contraindicated for patients with severe osteoarthritis of the knee, inflammatory arthritis, inflammatory joint disease, or uncorrected congenital blood coagulation disorders. Macy is also not indicated for use in patients who have undergone prior knee surgery in the past six months excluding surgery to procure a biopsy or a concomitant procedure to prepare the knee for a Macy implant. Macy is contraindicated in patients who are unable to follow a physician-prescribed post-surgical rehabilitation program. The safety of Macy in patients with malignancy in the area of cartilage biopsy or implant is unknown. Expansion of present malignant or dysplastic cells during the culturing process or implantation is possible. Patients undergoing procedures associated with Macy are not routinely tested for transmissible infectious diseases. A cartilage biopsy and Macy implants may carry the risk of transmitting infectious diseases to healthcare providers handling the tissue. Universal precautions should be employed when handling the biopsy samples and the Macy product. Final sterility test results are not available at the time of shipping. In the case of positive sterility results, healthcare providers will be contacted. To create a favorable environment for healing, concomitant pathologies that include meniscal pathology, cruciate ligament instability, and joint misalignment must be addressed prior to or concurrent with the implantation of Macy. Local treatment guidelines regarding the use of thromboprophylaxis and antibiotic prophylaxis around orthopedic surgery should be followed. Use in patients with local inflammations or active infections in the bone, joint, and surrounding soft tissue should be temporarily deferred until documented recovery. The Macy implant is not recommended during pregnancy. For implantations post-pregnancy, the safety of breastfeeding to infant has not been determined. Use of Macy in pediatric patients, younger than 18 years of age, or patients over 65 years of age has not been established. The most frequently occurring adverse reactions reported for Macy, less than or equal to 5%, were arthralgia, tendonitis, back pain, joint swelling, and joint effusion. Serious adverse reactions reported for Macy were arthralgia, cartilage injury, meniscus injury, treatment failure, and osteoarthritis. For more information or to view full prescribing information, please go to macy.com.